Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting homemade trigonometric equation that involves Euler's number, E, which is about 2.7. Anyways, we have cosine x equals 1 plus e squared divided by 2e. And we're going to be solving for x values. But before we start solving this problem, I'm going to show you a graph of these two functions, one of which is being a constant function and the other trigonometric. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions first because solving an equation can also be done sometimes graphically where you kind of compare the graphs of two functions. If there's an intersection point, then you have some solutions. Or where they intersect, we ha will have some solutions. So when you look at the graph of cosine x, you probably already know what that looks like. But the right-hand side is a constant. So when you compare these two graphs, what do you notice? Y equals cosine x, as you know, kind of like a sine. It's like a sine wave with a different uh, shift. And then uh, the other one is a horizontal line whose y value is about 1.54, 1.54. So one thing that's interesting here is they do not seem to intersect. And why is that happening? If you consider these two functions very carefully, you're going to understand why they do not intersect. So let's talk about that a little bit before we start solving this problem. First of all, consider y equals cosine x. What is the maximum value and minimum value for cosine x? And if you are familiar with some trigonometric identities, you should know that cosine x is always between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive. And if you think about it in terms of right triangle trigonometry, you should know that the cosine of an angle is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. On a right triangle, this is always going to be less than 1 and positive. But if you consider the unit circle, you can also talk about some negative values because basically the x and y values are determined by the coordinates. Make sense? So that's why the maximum value for cosine function is 1. But this value, the y value, is greater than 1. That's why these two graphs do not intersect, right? That should be no surprise. But what does that mean? It means that there are no solutions. So why, why we should try to solve this problem, right? Well, it just means that there are no real solutions. Maybe there are complex solutions. Who knows, right? So we're going to go into the complex world here a little bit. I'm going to give you some identities that we're going to use to solve this problem. That's actually how I came up with this problem. Okay, great. We can talk about that too if I don't forget. So in order to be able to solve this problem, obviously when I when you're given a problem like this, like cosine x, and I believe I've done this before, either the cosine or the sine, I can't remember, so let's say you have a problem like cosine x equals 2, then there's no real solutions because cosine cannot exceed 1, right? How do you solve it? You can't just say x is equal to cosine inverse of 2 or some people say arc cosine of 2. That's going to be a cheap solution, okay? <laughs> we want a much better answer. So that's what we're going to do e without using uh, inverse trigonometric values. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use Euler's formulas. Obviously, Euler's number kind of gives us an idea about that, right? So consider the following. e to the power ix by Euler's formula equals cosine x plus i sine x. Now, if you replace the x with negative x, obviously you can't replace i with negative i, right? But you can replace x because x is a variable, i is a constant. So you can only replace variables with something else. So if you replace x with negative x, you get e to the power negative ix, and then you get cosine of negative x plus i sine of negative x. But cosine is an even function, so cosine of negative x is the same as cosine x, and sine is an odd function. Sine of negative x is negative of sine x, so it's going to be a minus i sine x. This is e to the power negative ix, and this is e to the power ix. Let me go ahead and copy e to the power ix here one more time. And then our goal, and remember what our goal is, let's draw a line here so we can focus on these two equations. So my goal is to find cosine x in terms of something else. So here's what I can do. 
I can go ahead and add these two equations. When I do, negative i sine x, since i sine x is going to cancel out, I'm going to get e to the power i x plus e to the power negative i x equals 2 cosine of x. Great. Now let's divide both sides by 2, and we got the value of cosine x. What do we do next? Well, since we got the value of cosine x in terms of e to the power something plus e to the power something else, and we are given an equation, we can go ahead and hopefully solve this problem. So cosine x can be written as e to the ix plus e to the negative ix divided by 2. You can also use hyperbolic cosine for this, you know, stuff like that. Hyperbolic functions come up in these cases. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace uh, this with cosine x with this numerical value. Now, what I'd like to do is solve this equation. Forget about cosine x and let's solve this equation. Yes, what's nice about this equation? Easy to solve and it turns into a quadratic. And I think we've done a similar problem before. It's probably cosine x equals 2 is when we did it. I can't remember. I think it was cosine x. Anyways, I'll, find, uh, I'll try to find it and share the link with you here. So, how do you solve this? Let's go ahead and call this something. How about t? That gives us t and e to the power of negative ix is 1 over e to the power x. Remember that? Let's write it down. 1 over e to the ix which is 1 over t. So from here we get the following. t plus 1 over t divided by 2 equals 1 plus e squared divided by 2e. 2e or not 2e. I know some people don't like that joke, but I have to say it. 2 cancels out and we end up with something like this. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator. t squared plus 1 over t equals 1 plus e squared over e. Now if you're careful, you'll notice that t equals e is a solution, but there's another solution because this is quadratic. You could find that. I'll show you how to find it in a little bit, but let's go ahead and deal with the quadratic function first. So t squared plus e, 1 I'm going to multiply by e, and t I'm going to multiply by 1 plus e squared. e t squared plus e equals t plus e squared t. Let's go ahead and put it all together to make a full quadratic. e t squared minus e squared plus 1. I'm going to put that in parentheses t. Actually, I didn't need to distribute here. I could just keep it as is. But anyways, plus e is equal to 0. There's quite a few e's here. That's OK. Those are constants. And now t is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4e squared. 4ac, right? 4bc. 4ac? b squared minus 4ac, yes. Divide by 2e. So now these are going to be the t values. Let's see what that looks like. Now, inside the parentheses, I have an expression. Let's go ahead and simplify that first. e squared plus 1 squared minus 4e squared can be written as e to the 4th plus 2e squared plus 1 minus 4e squared. And that is e to the 4 minus 2e squared plus 1. And that is e squared minus 1 quantity squared. So that's my discriminant. So t is going to be e squared plus 1 plus minus this divided by 2e. Let's go ahead and separate these. t equals e squared plus 1 plus e squared minus 1 divided by 2e. 1 cancels out. 2e squared divided by 2e gives us e as one of the solutions. And we said that, right? The other solution is going to be e squared plus 1 minus e squared plus 1 divided by 2e. And that's going to give us 2 over 2e, which is 1 over e. Well, that, the other one is just the reciprocal. Let's go ahead and see why this is happening. If you look at this equation very carefully, you're going to notice the following, hopefully. If you kind of break it down like this is going to be t plus 1 over t, and this is going to be e plus 1 over e. Notice that t equals e works, but t equals 1 over e also works because 1 over 1 over e is also e. Make sense? Great, so we got the solutions, but what is t? t is e to the power ix, right? ix e to the power ix. So from here, what do you get? e to the power ix equals e, but you got to write the e as e times e to the power 2n pi i, because this represents 1 in the complex world, so we kind of have to think about it this way. ix equals, this is 1, 1 plus 2n pi i. If you divide both sides by i, you'll get the x value. And if you multiply both the top and the bottom by negative i, you're going to get a positive 1 at the bottom, so you're going to get negative i plus minus i squared. That's going to give us a plus 2n pi. You could also write it as 2n pi minus i. The other one is just going to give us negative 1 
e to the power negative 1 and that can be written as e to the power negative 1 times e to the power 2n pi i and from here you're going to get the same idea i x equals 2n pi i minus 1 divide by i multiply by negative i and you should get the answer this should be 2n pi i times negative i is going to be 2n pi and then plus i and that's going to be the other solution that you'll be getting from here as i said earlier the solutions are not going to be real they're going to be complex and this brings us to the end of the video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye